what's up, y'all? This is a little thing that we call the cipher. The cipher. I am your man, Marcus the Kid Warner. With me is my man, as always, my man, Moff. How you going today, on, man? Sir? Two man cipher. What's going on? Two man cipher today, always man. Look, two. look now. Anybody who knows anything about hip hop knows that the Wu Tang Clan came around in the '90s and pretty much changed the game. Wu Tang. Wu Tang. Right. All right. Now, after the Wu Tang <laughs> dropped the Thirty Six Chambers on us, then they all branched out, did uh, did their own thing. Um, some albums were good, some albums were bad. Yeah. Oh, I mean, some albums were. Eh. Yeah, I mean, you know what? I think what it was is that Wu Tang helped define the sound of that of the '90s golden era of hip hop. If yeah, that's my opinion on it. I agree. They really helped define that whole sound. Mm -hmm. That those grimy beats, very uncompromising. Right. Not cro In fact, you can be so. You can, you can not cross over so much till you actually do cross over. Right. Because mad white kids knew what was going on with Wu-Tang in the 90s. Mm -hmm. You know, they prefer Wu-Tang when it came to their hip-hop in the 90s a lot of times. Wasn't it just, um, uh, was it last year or the year before last, we went to go see, um, we went to go see the RZA? Not the RZA, but uh, the Jizza at the Icon. We saw the Jizza, and the Jizza actually performed with um, DJ Muggs, mm -hmm. who was the DJ and producer for Cypress Hill. Correct. And they put out a great, great, great album. Check that album. Mm -hmm. What's the name of that album? Uh, I can't it's, 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 it's actually is uh, Jizza versus DJ Muggs. Okay. And, and, and DJ Muggs, and we're digressing a little bit, but mm -hmm. really uh, DJ Muggs has these uh, series of albums mm -hmm. where he uses his beats uh, with some of the more well-known underground MCs, mm -hmm. and he, it is, it's usually DJ Muggs versus because he has a DJ Muggs versus Planet Asia too. Mm -hmm. And we reviewed just a few weeks ago the Strong Arm Steady mm -hmm. uh, uh, album, which uh, Planet Asia really is a part of. Right. Right. Uh, the reason why I wanted to go into the thing about the icon because I remember when we went to go see the performance. I mean, it was a very diverse group of the performance of itself. I yeah, well, that 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 goes right. without uh, you know just, without getting into that too, yeah, too right, far. Right, right, right. Um, it's just that the group of people that were there were actually you know yeah very yeah, diverse you know, man. People like us who grew up I'm not I say grew up with Wu Tang, yeah. but you know um, in the mid '90s when 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 uh, Wu Tang Wu Tang Clan had just came out it was mad hot right. you know you had people like us there you had people who were maybe 10 15 years younger than us right and at the same place right. throwing up the Wu side so right. it, so i think one of those the wu-tang clan is one of those groups that are very you know they can just cut through that generation uh, barrier cut through the uh cut through the racial barrier mm. they were just a very very influ infra inf um what's what i'm looking for influential Thank you, influential group back in the 90s and in the 2000s. Now, the reason why we bring that up is because the Wu-Tang just got back together right now and came out with a new classic, I think, damn near. Classic? Classic. Wow, okay. Wu Massacre. Wu Massacre, okay. okay. Wu Massacre. Okay. Um, they came out hitting one of my well, favorite tracks. Let's, let's be a little bit more specific about okay. Wu-Tang. Number one, they, they were always together, number one. But number two, it's really the, it's, um, excuse me, Method Man, mm -hmm. Raekwon, and Ghostface. Those right. three... Uh, uh, put out an album. Okay, uh, but let's be Mexico. real. Those are the three made. I I think personally, you know, those are the, those are like that's like the spine of of, of the Wu Tang Clan. I mean, without the jizz in there. Mm, I, you know, we we you know we we could, that's that's an, that's another debate. Mm -hmm. But that said, yes. I'm just saying. Anyway, the album starts off with. Uh, criminology 2.5 right. smacks you right inside, right Doesn't inside the head. Wasn't let you know. They let you know right from the jump mm -hmm. that you this are immersed in the Wu Tang experience. This right is a Wu Tang right. Clan joint. Right. All right, um, and then I mean, just what are some of the other tracks that you that you really like? Well, like well my my thing is, and we we talked about this beforehand. Really, the Meth vs. Chef mm -hmm. album I felt was absolutely great. Mm -hmm. A song album. I, 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 chef, I mean, the horns on that thing. Mm -hmm. We were talking about the horns, man. Mm -hmm. And it reminds me, that's very, very much a mid 90s. Mm -hmm. You know, horns, dark, underground. Right. Uh, also, uh, another ch another two songs that stand out for me are uh, Gun Showers mm -hmm. and uh, Dangerous. Right. Uh, you know, just, just beat wide, just off the hook. Um, I thought, and I was pleasantly surprised by this album. Okay. And this kind of makes it kind of two for two of the last couple of Wu Tang albums because I really thought that one of the most slept on slept on albums of last year and early this year was a uh, Wu Tang or excuse me Raekwon the Chef's Only Built for Cuban Links too. Okay. I thought that was really slept on, and really the way they're trending right now, and I'll take it either back. The Blackout Part Two from last year I thought mm. was a slept on album. 
Yeah, that, that was very good. good. You know, I, I thought that was good. So you got to figure, you had that going on in 2009. Late 2009 was the Raekwon album. Mm -hmm. And now this, the Wu Massacre, mm -hmm. I think that you have, and Inspector Deck, incidentally, mm -hmm. has come out with a solo album. And I haven't, haven't given that a good listen yet. Okay. I've kind of casually listened to it. But at, that said, mm -hmm. I mean, Wu Tang is trending uh, on, on the upswing a little bit as far as our production, lyrics, the whole nine. You know, mm -hmm. and they may be reintroducing themselves to a whole new generation of potential Wu Tang fans. Well, what do you think? I believe that that's absolutely true. I think that you know you might get, might have a lot of people like right now that are just now finding out about the Wu Tang Clan, right. you know, and they just might be saying, okay, wow, these guys are really off the chain. But if right. you go back and just look at some of their albums, you have some real deep classic albums on there. Like, yeah. okay, let me digress a little bit. I every time I listen to like a Wu Tang album, anytime I listen to the Method Man, period, right. you know, and I have to go back and listen to some of his his earlier uh, solo works. I mean, mm -hmm. it's more specifically saying to Cal, mm -hmm. I went back and listened to to Cal. Brilliant <laughs> classic album. Okay. I'm sorry, you know, and that's one of the albums I think that you know I don't think it was slept on, but I, I haven't heard too many people talk about it well, as being a classic you album. You know what it was? I, I think if we were really to go back in time a little bit, he was the first guy to come out with his solo album after the 36 Chambers. Am I correct on that? Yes, you are. He was the first one, mm -hmm. and I th when you looked at all the MCs at that time, mm -hmm. it appeared that well, Method Man certainly stood out. Mm -hmm. You know, he was the best MC. Assert, flow wise anyway right you know what I'm saying so when he came out with the solo album we were probably expecting a little bit more you know tempo groovy type of type of album from Method Man mm -hmm. and I think it threw people for a loop because that album that, that to Cal the original to Cal album mm -hmm. was kind of like it's very dark very you know, dark very, you know very dark uh, very, uh, you know risen is prime type mm -hmm. beats um, I, I liked it, but it had to grow on me a little bit. Really? Yeah, it did, because I was expecting something a little bit more. I was expecting kind of a bigger album. Mm -hmm. You know, bigger. I was expecting more, like, 2 Cal 2000. Mm -hmm. I was expecting that album. Oh, You know okay. what I'm saying? Not that that's a great album, mm -hmm. but I was expecting that type of album com coming into the game. You know, right. where, yeah, Wizard, Wizard will probably produce half of it, but then, you know, throw it, add in a little bit of this guy, that guy, and that guy to help produce it because, mm -hmm. you know, Method Man was the kind of guy that had the mass appeal, the broad mm -hmm. appeal, and, uh, and the other Wu Tang members at the time, mm -hmm. you know, didn't, didn't, but, you know, upon further review, that album was banging. And then, and, and it's funny, because in my eyes, that album kind of set the stage for the rest of those. A uh, 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 golden era '90s solo Wu Tang albums, because right after mm. they had Old Dirty Bastards album, which I mm. thought was a, cl I think it's a classic, no question to me. Mm. I love that album, uh, Liquid Tours by Jizza. Wow, no, don't even get me started. Uh, Liquid Lyric, Tours, wow. Lyric, I mean, I you know, beat wise is off the chain mm. lyrically. It's when like it's like ahead of the time, <laughs> you know. So, to perform so um, bad. It's not good. Anyway, right. let me. So, but I, you know, without digressing too much into the to the golden era, mm. the Wu Massacre Wu Massacre album, I think, is a great album. But mm. that said, classic though. I'm not seeing a classic right now. I need some more time for that. You know what? Maybe I jumped the gun in classic a little bit. I yeah. will, I will take that statement you know? back. But I'll tell you this much. Maybe it was just I was just so happy to hear that. That 90s type type sound, that flow, I, it just sounded so grimy. And with all the hip hop that's out right now, I'm not saying that all the hip hop out, out right now right. is not good, well, but yeah. it's grimy. It's you know, it's it's just very lyrically put together, beat wise, lyrical wise. I was blown away, yeah. and I was just happy, happy to, to to hear that type of sound coming from the Wu Tang. Well, what you're what you're seeing right now is a, a trend in hip hop to get back to that. Raw 90 sound. Mm -hmm. You've seen it too often. I just got finished listening to the uh, Little Brother album yesterday, the new mm -hmm. Little Brother album. And this right. is one cut on there where Fonte from Little Brothers, from Little Brothers says before they get in, before they start flowing, you know, I'm about to show you what real hip hop sound like. And mm -hmm. they go into it and it's dope. You know what I mean? Because, like, they understand. It's like a lot of kids, even though they, they listen to rap music, mm -hmm. don't really understand what hip hop is supposed to sound like. True. You know, and they miss that boom bap. There's a lot of boom bap in a, in a Wu Massacre. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I just got finished reviewing a Strong Arm Study album. That's a hip hop album. Mm -hmm. Little Brother's album, which we're in the coming weeks we'll review. Straight hip hop album. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Well, well the thing I, the, what I can say about that is, okay. you know, like Little Brother. I mean, I know about Little Brother. You told me about Little Brother. Little Brother has uh, a big following, but they're not in the mainstream. Unless, unless I'm missing something. They're, they're underground album. Very under, very underground album. Uh, very but you know, album. but the but the Wu Tang had Wu Tang Clan has a, has a vehicle to get out there into the mainstream and show people what actual hip hop's supposed to sound like. That being said, the Wu Massacre, I believe, is brilliantly put together, beat wise, lyrically wise. Out of five, I give it four and a half. 
Only reason I don't give it five stars is because Old Dirty Bass stayed there. Okay. He crazy. <laughs> I did get a full massacre. Three and a half stars, which I think is very good. Three and a half out of five. Uh, you know, solid beats. Uh, lyrically, I think is solid. And I think they have another uh, Wu Banger in their hands. Mm -hmm. Peace. Peace. We're out of here. Cypher, baby. <laughs>